<clears throat> I'm going to tell you about where I grew up. I don't know why. It just seems to be a good way to end this thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got nothing to do with anything. But I grew up in a small town called Central South Carolina. And the first of my family to go to college, my dad owned a bar, a pool room, and a liquor store. And uh, my mom ran <clears throat> the, the bar, and my dad ran the liquor store, and when I was old enough, I ran the pool room. This is why I think I'm a good senator. It's good training for this job. But I remember, speaking about country music, we had a piccolo. You know what a piccolo is, Judge? I don't know what a piccolo well, is. Well, you're too young. A piccolo is something you put money in to listen to the song. And the one song that I remember to my dying day, talk about country music titles, was My Wife Ran Off With My Best Friend and I Miss Him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a wonderful country. And I just want to say to my Democratic colleagues, I have lost sleep over this hearing. I did not know how it would go. Uh, there's a lot of tension. 2020 is the year that is unbelievable in every fashion. Uh, you've asked challenging questions of the nominee. You've asked probing questions of the nominee. And at times, you've done some of the things that Senator Blackburn talked about, in my view. But thank you, on behalf of the country, for allowing us to get through this hearing in a fashion that I think it, um, is befitting of the Senate. To my Republican colleagues, thank you for being patient. Uh, but this is not about us, it's about you, Judge. I will end where we began. The hope was not to really change anybody's mind. I don't think that's possible in today's environment, and I say that accepting 2020 for what it is. But I'm hoping that people who did not know you know you better. I'm hoping that young women who are conservative see hope in you, what Senator Blackburn said. I hope people who've listened find uh, your disposition reassuring. You're one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met in my life. And that's saying a lot because I've got to meet a lot of incredible people as a senator and otherwise serving in the Air Force. Your knowledge of law is just unbelievable, deep and wide. Your, your judicial philosophy, I think, is very mainstream. You're exactly who a Republican would be looking at picking, not so much a Democrat. And that's not a slam on you because elections have consequences. And to my good friend, Senator Whitehouse, I want to reform the system. It needs to be reformed. But nobody had to spend 15 cents to tell me that you're qualified. I figured that out on my own. I followed your career from afar. And this is the first time I've really had a chance to interact with you. And all I can say is that I've seen a lot of people come and go. We've had some of the most talented people in this country sit where you're sitting, and you've acquitted yourself well. You have much to be proud of. Your children uh, have much to be proud of in their mother. Your husband has much to be proud of in his wife. You have much to be proud of um, in terms of how you served your country thus far. And with Amy Barrett, the best is yet to come. So in another time, in another place, you would get everybody's vote. It's not about you. It's about us. Somehow we have lost our way. There's no use blaming one side versus the other. This always seems to be that our people get treated pretty harshly. I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan because I saw in them the qualities that a Democratic president would be looking for and the character, the integrity that the public would appreciate and would be fitting of the job. Elections do have consequences. This vacancy came about through a tragic demise of one of the greatest uh, women of any time. She did things that no other woman was able to do and through her actions paved the way uh, for women to achieve their goals. She has a different philosophy than you do judicially. That is okay. I hope it's okay that you can be pro-life and adhere to your faith and still be considered by your fellow citizens worthy of this job. I think you have met every test that any reasonable person could impose in terms of qualifications. I think you've made every test in terms of disposition and character 
that the public could hope for in terms of having somebody sit at the table at the Supreme Court. You will be confirmed, God willing. You will have my full support. I see in you someone who's not only highly qualified to be in the court in every way possible, but somebody that has broken new ground in a positive way for the country. So what we will be doing now is uh, going closed session. Uh, the FBI evaluation will be presented to the committee. That's standard practice for every nominee. We will uh, meet again here just in, where's the room? Dirksen G50. Uh, you will be with us. We do this for every nominee going back to uh, Chairman Biden. And it is over. The hearing part is over. You can have two glasses of wine tonight if you like. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'll defer to Senator Durbin if he wants to go first. Yes, I would just like to finish my thought, then we'll defer to Senator Durbin. The hearing part is over. You acquitted yourself well. But the journey you're about to take is going to be challenging, it's going to be rewarding, and may God bless you in this endeavor. Senator Durbin. Mr. Chairman, uh, on behalf of the